crowd starting to come in to celebrate the open of Waypoint Park here in Bellingham, Washington. and industrial use. We were very interested in not losing all the family wage jobs that Georgia Pacific had created here on the waterfront, even though those jobs went away and they're not going to be coming back. But with the cleanup, um, with the public access, and connecting, so important to connect downtown with the waterfront, because this is going to be a long development project, and our downtown uh, needs to be connected to the new vitality that's going to be here. So we are standing in Waypoint Park, which is great. I think it had several names before I got to that one. Um, and we're also going to be looking at expanding the park and the trails throughout this site. That was one thing that the public said they really wanted, and that's one thing that we're going to be able to do. We, um, between Central Pier here and Waypoint Park, we spent $4.8 million. So that is a lot of money, but this is going to last forever. So when you think about it that way, it's a worthwhile investment. We have the acid ball, which we will be dedicating later in the afternoon. And And uh, that was uh, what our, one of our first uh, projects with that we the city council passed, where it was a tenth of a percent or one percent one percent for the arts. So this is our one percent for the arts, and every big project that we do will have something special. Down here, we wanted to preserve some of the old character and industrial artifacts, and in true partnership. 
the city and the port split the cost of creating this beach access for the public. Um, I'll tell you, it's great to have partners. So we're working on the streets and the utilities. Uh, total cost of the streets is going to be $12 million, and we have partners at the state and federal level who are helping us with that. And I would like to uh, thank our funding partners that are here today. And if you just raise your hand, uh, because I think you all deserve a round of applause. First of all, how uh, Rob, Rob Fix and Port Commissioners, raise your hand that are here. I see Michael, I saw Bobby, there's Rob. Apologies, Doug, and whoever's here with you. Uh, Senator Patty Murray's office. Senator Murray was the one that got us a huge chunk of money to put into the waterfront redevelopment, and we really appreciate that. And we were able to plan well enough to be able to spend it before it, it expired, so that was great. And then Whatcom County, who, there's Jack, Whatcom County, who was very supportive of the million dollars we got uh, in economic development incentive money to work on the infrastructure down here, so that was great. Uh, Senator Patty Murray's office. Senator Murray was the one that got us a huge chunk of money to put into the waterfront redevelopment, and we really appreciate that. And we were able to plan well enough to be able to spend it before it, it expired, so that was great. And then Whatcom County, who, there's Jack, Whatcom County, who was very supportive of the million dollars we got uh, in economic development incentive money to work on the infrastructure down here, so that was great. Um, I couldn't be happier. I didn't think I'd ever be standing here on the Georgia Pacific site as a, as a, a resident enjoying the amenities, because it was always a workplace. And um, if it wasn't for the port's foresight in looking at the piece of property and deciding what to do, uh, we wouldn't be here today. Rob Fix, you want to come up? I'm going to say a couple things about you. <laughs> They're really nice things. I'll just tell you, the good thing about working with Rob is he and I, nothing's personal. We're looking to do what's best for the for the community. So even though during a course of very, very, very difficult negotiations, uh, we were able to come to an agreement because we always put the community first. And I, I need to thank Rob for that. Uh, two other people I would like to mention who were instrumental in getting this done, uh, other than the people that are going to speak. Uh, one of those is Seth Fleetwood. Seth, wave your hand. Seth Fleetwood was president of the council, and we were just lamenting about, gee, towards the end, before this vote, kind of lost support. But in the end, it was a six to one vote, and thank you, Seth, you were instrumental in making that happen. And then the other person is Terry Borneman. Where's Terry? Right here in front. Terry got to spend the whole year as the chair of the Waterfront Committee. <laughs> that wasn't probably the most fun committee to be the chair of that year. But in the end, it was, because we came out with a great plan. We worked with great partners. The council was very supportive. And I'll turn it over to Rob to talk about the ports part in this wonderful project. that you see over here is currently being rehabbed by a developer called Harcourt. That building should open hopefully by the end of the year or early next year. Next week you're going to see a foundation poured on the back side of that building for an annex. You can see photos on the other side on the pier of what that's going to look like. There's going to be a restaurant yet to be named that will go into that space. There will be a deck on the top that you can sit there and have a cup of coffee or a beer and eat your meal and look at the walking waterway and the incredible view. So that's coming up. Shortly following that, and I think in the permitting process in front of the Planning Commission, uh, maybe even next Tuesday, is three residential units that are going to go in just on the other side of the acid ball. There'll be a total of 70 units, three buildings, and we're hoping that they break ground on that before the end of the year and that the construction's about an 18-month construction period. 
that would be project two. So project one, project two. Then we're gonna go back over here across the street from the granary building to talk about project three. That'll be an office building. They will start off by building a car deck. So structured parking with pads on it for two office buildings, approximately 40,000 square foot each. So let's keep in mind that Bellingham is kind of busting at the seams. This is our only opportunity down here really for economic development, for attracting businesses, for businesses to expand. So when we add 80,000 square feet of office space down here, the vision is that we'll have high tech companies, clean energy type companies down here uh, conducting their business. These companies play a very good wage, they do good work, and we're happy to have them in Bellingham. Project 4 will likely be a hotel. You can see the red brick building over there. It's a low rise red brick building. That will serve as like the lobby, some of the meeting space, maybe a restaurant. And then behind it will be a four or five story tower that will serve as the hotel guest room. So that's project number four. That's all we have planned at this time. And when, once those are going, we'll start planning project five, plan project six, et cetera. Um, let's see, what should I talk about here? WWU, Western. I think I saw President Sabah here. Is he here? Yes. So President Sabah is another, <laughs> another really important partner in this project. President Sabah is leading up an effort to bring Western down onto our waterfront. So Western will have some acreage on the other side of the hotel for them to design their campus. And they're in the process of determining what programs will go down here, how those are funded, what buildings will be in that. Uh, they've assured us that it'll be very open space like their current campus with lots of green space in it, walk through. Uh, it, it'll be just like the rest of the site. It'll be very accessible for the public. So big thanks for Western for participating in that effort. Uh, starting uh, next week, we are going to bid a parking lot. So a lot of you came down here on bike. Congratulations on that. Some of us drove down and we parked probably as far down as the port offices. Uh, a lack of parking was noticed, I'm sure. So right across the street here from Granary, uh, we're going to take out for bid next week. I think I just said that to do a parking lot. We'll probably have about 100 stalls in that parking lot. That'll allow you to come down here, you know, have a place to park and bring your kayak or your stand-up paddleboard and launch right at the waterway right behind you. So very exciting that that should be done uh, by mid-October, I think, if not earlier. And that leads me to the last thing I'd like to talk about, and that's economic development. This would not be possible if we had not done an environmental cleanup. So the environmental cleanup that we did in the Whatcom Waterway right behind you was about $45 million. Half of that was funded by the state's uh, MACA Act, which is Model Toxics Control Act, and the other half was funded by the port. That cleanup allowed us to use the waterway in a way it hasn't been used in years. So you're seeing a lot of barges down here. And if you'll turn around and look at the red and white fleet boat there. Pretty incredible big boat, huh? That was built right here in Bellingham. So it was built by All-American Marine. You can't quite see their facility. It's right off of uh, uh, Hilton Avenue down there. And they have a brand new facility that used to be in Fairhaven. We moved them there about a year and a half ago. They build those vessels there, and they launch those in Squalicum Harbor at the boat launch, just where you would launch a 20-foot bay liner. So you may have seen pictures of that in the Bellingham Herald. It's incredible to watch these things be launched, and it is a true community effort. And I say that because that boat was pulled over from the Squalicum boat launch to this location by our local fishermen. So they took their skiffs, uh, Commissioner Bobby Briscoe's here, his uncle was one of those driving a skiff. Two skiffs pulled that boat all the way from Squalcom Water over here. And it's important because that is built in, on the dry land, right? Then it has to spend some time in the water doing sea trials, fitting out the electronics and all of that. And that's what they're doing over there now. It should disappear in about a week. It's gonna go to San Francisco where they'll have cruises in San Francisco Bay. We built a similar one earlier that went to Argosy down in Seattle. So if you ever see an Argosy vessel down in Seattle, uh, Puget Sound, one of their vessels were built right here in Bellingham. All-American Marine employs about 80 people, uh, give or take, depending on the projects they're working at. And they've almost doubled their employment since when they were in Fairhaven. So we're very proud of that project. And it shows you what we can do when we have an environmental, successful environmental cleanup, how that increases the job base here in Watford County. Can we talk a little bit about the street? Uh, the mayor mentioned some of some of the components of the street. Uh, it is the primary arterial to serve this large waterfront, uh, several hundred acres. Uh, but one of the real 
goals when we looked at how to design the street was not to have this large arterial that overwhelms the site. Uh, primary goal was to make the waterfront district very walkable, make it comfortable for bikes and pedestrians. So when you get a chance to go up and look at the street, take a look at that. We tried to keep the travel lanes very narrow. You'll see the city's first dedicated separated cycle track. So when you go up there, the area between the street and the sidewalk, which is gravel right now, it's not finished, it'll be paved shortly, is a cycle track dedicated just for, for bicycles to get them out of the traveled way. The first of its kind in the city of Bellingham, so we're excited about that. The street will have a full signalized intersection at Rotor, where it, where it meets by the Granary Building. This road that's parallel to the waterfront we call Granary Avenue. And it'll go all the way down to that red big brick building that Rob mentioned that will be a future hotel. And then it'll head along the Laurel Street right away and connect out to Cornwall Avenue. And that will be the arterial that serves the waterfront. All of the developments that Rob talked about, the first four projects, will take access off these two streets. So we're excited about that. Um, the schedule at this point is, as you can see, when you go out there, it's well underway and we anticipate having uh, the street complete sometime early next year, first part of 2019. So we're getting close. Uh, and feel free to walk up and take a look at it. Very wide sidewalks. Again, trying to make it pedestrian friendly. You'll see a raised crosswalk. Rob mentioned the parking lot that's going to go in on the other side of Granary Avenue. We'll have a raised crosswalk that makes it very safe and easy for people to cross over to the park and to the, the projects that are ongoing here. So um, look for more to come soon. And uh, we hope to get this done like I said the first part of next year it also has all the city utilities obviously water and sewer uh, franchise utilities lots of communication fiber optics to serve what's going to happen down here hopefully with economic development and the port's putting in some specific utilities to the waterfront site uh, some district heating more efficient ways to provide heating to the buildings down here uh, more environment environmentally friendly less emissions so that's also exciting so that's what's going on with the street I want to thank you all for coming down here today. I feel sun. Um, enjoy the Hot House Jazz Band and West and West Coast Pops. Um, I'll tell you, the music was exactly what we needed. Thank you very much. And if you're interested, we are going to dedicate the acid ball now. So any of you that are interested, follow me. And thanks for coming. Thank you.